The Xiaomi Mi 5X is a bit of a strange release. This is a cross between the best, Xiaomi thinks, of the Redmi Note 4X and the 4, and then the Mi 6, which is their flagship. So the camera is hyped up to be as good as the Mi 6. Unfortunately, it isn't. And I even find that the phone on the left you can see here, which is the Mi Max 2, the IMX 398 that it has in here actually takes better images than that of the Mi 5X. So it does have a lot of things in common with the Mi Max 2. You can see the design on the rear is very similar the way they have finished the antenna lines, the dual tone LED flash on the rear as well, and the fingerprint readers, both in the same location. On the bottom is where you will find all of the ports. So we have a loudspeaker, which is slightly louder than the likes of the Redmi Note 4X. So I'll give you a sample of that later on in this video. Type-C port. Now it does not include a quick charger in the box. However, it will support quick charging, but it's not the fastest to charge. It takes around two hours and nine minutes to fully charge from completely dead. The little microphone there, you can see that dot and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now this headphone jack is now paired up with a new digital audio analog converter. So the sound is really quite good. So we have a different DAC in there than other phones like the Redmi Note 4X. And there's a big difference in the audio output from this. It does sound really good, quite punchy, louder than normal, and overall not bad. On the top you'll find an IR transmitter, secondary microphone for noise cancellation that works reasonably well in voice calls. And the camera bump you can see, it sticks out, protrudes, by approximately one millimeter. Buttons on the right side, these are made out of metal, they've got a good feel to them, and they don't rattle around. The SIM tray on the left will take a micro SD card nano SIM or two nano SIMs. On the top of the 5X, a front facing five megapixel camera that can shoot 720p max, and then our earpiece, hardware navigation keys down the bottom. Now you only see them when they are activated the screen is a 1080p IPS, it has 2.5D curved edged glass on there. Now I don't know whether it's Gorilla Glass or Dragon Tail. I feel it's Dragon Tail, probably the cheaper brand that they use on this. So the colors you get out of the screen are reasonably good. And the maximum brightness tops out at around 400 lux, which is good. But it does suffer a little bit in direct daylight. And overall, the screen, the touch response is really good. I'd say above average there, but the screen isn't quite as good as the likes you'll find on the Xiaomi Mi 6. So it is powered by an optical Snapdragon 625. This isn't the most powerful chipset. This is more for a mid-range mobile. And the performance of it is good. I'll show you more of that. But you can see that it is coupled with four gigabytes of RAM. Now you get approximately 54 gigabytes free when you first get the phone. And it isn't running MIUI 9 yet because that is still in beta. Now I could download it and install that, but I like to review exactly what I get out of the box just to make things fair here because there will be a lot of bugs I still feel on MIUI 9. That's really the main reason why I'm not reviewing that. And it doesn't support LTE Band 20 unfortunately. You can see the Android version is 7.1.2 and the security patch level is relatively recent there which is good. So the performance of the phone, in general it is most of the time fluid and snappy. Now loading up some things can be a little bit slow. You do see some delays here and there. Now with the four gigabytes of RAM, it allows us to do quite a bit of multitasking before the task manager starts to kill things off. If you do not go to them for, I think it's about 10 minutes or so, it will kill off applications and things. So loading up certain apps, sometimes you see that delay. Now the speed of it to me feels a little slower than my Xiaomi Mi Max 2 that I use as my daily phone. So I'm noticing a little bit of a difference here. So I feel that further ROM optimization is needed there. But overall the performance and scrolling performance and things in Chrome, I think most people are gonna be pleased with that. It's not Snapdragon 835 territory. And you can't expect that because this is a mid-range chipset. But overall, the performance I find here is Twitter. It's going to be pretty good. You see that as smooth as to some of those images that are loading in there, which is normal. They got a cache in, but overall not the worst here. I just hope that they release a few optimization tweaks and things just to speed it up and make it as smooth as the Redmi Note 4 and my Mi Max 2. So let's jump through a few benchmarks here. This is the Geekbench 4 score and then the Antutu score on par with other Snapdragon 625s. 
So nothing really different there. Now the GPS I've noticed that isn't performing as good as I would expect from a Snapdragon 625. It's not as good as my Redmi Note 4 or my Mi Max 2. I've noticed that it just takes a lot longer and it doesn't tend to lock on to as many satellites and the accuracy always tends to hover around six to five. So I think this is just software. They need to do a, a few more tweaks to improve on this, but a little disappointing the GPS performance. So driving around town and things, sometimes it was quite a bit off track there. It wasn't really reporting where I was exactly or within the range of about five or three meters. So a bit of a disappointment there. Now the wireless AC speeds here, you can see, they're good, they're fine, no problem with that. Now the range went to the other side of the uh, apartment here and it drops down a little bit the performance is definitely not up to par nor what i expect it to be of the mi 6 which performs a hell of a lot better because it's got a uh, two times two antenna set up on that one so the speeds you can see pretty much halved from the other side of the studio here now 4g speeds there are a lot of people in town at the moment it's uh fiestas here they've got so many different events and things on the population has doubled and the 4G speeds, the network seems to be a little bit slower here, but perfect, fine speeds, no issues with that, no issues at all with the signal reception and strength. So the internal storage is eMMC 5 spec, it's not UFS, you get that on the higher end flagships, but good speeds here, no problems with that whatsoever, random reads and writes, perfectly fine. So on to battery life, now here is the best results that I'm showing you here from the four days or so that I was continually testing and using this phone, you're looking at around between seven to nine hours of screen on time, which for me is slightly disappointing to taking into fact that on my Redmi Note 4X, I was able to get 14 hours of screen on time. Now we've got a 3080 milliamp hour battery in this mobile here. And of course we get 1,000 more, 4,000 milliamp hours on the Redmi Note 4X. So if you want battery life, that is still the mobile phone to go to, I feel. Or the Mi Max, of course, which has an even larger capacity. So that involved quite a bit of gaming. I was running Modern Combat 5 for a couple of hours, YouTube, listening to music, streaming continuously. Um, some more games as well played on there. And here you can see the screen on time was nine hours and three minutes. And the history, so it went down and depleted quite slowly there. Another thing to point out as well that I've noticed that the standby battery drain isn't as good as it should be. It's losing every hour or so about 4% uh, or 3% at times. It could be some of my applications to blame the fact that I've got a, a Play Store. I've installed it with like a cheat kind of way. It's not built into the ROM. So maybe that has something to do with it, but it's just noticed that it wasn't that great. So here was the last firmware update, which thankfully fixed the problem with the front camera's audio, which was great. So one disappointment is the charger that they include on this. Even though the Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 supports Quick Charge 3, they don't include one. You only get 2 amps and 5 volts. But you can get yourself something like this, which is a third-party official Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 charger. Now using this, these are the charge times I got here. You can see displayed. So it took a rather long time to get up to 91%, was an hour and a half. Now if you use the stand and charger, to fully charge is going to take almost three hours. But with the quick charger, it took two hours and nine minutes to get to 100%. And the slowest being from 90 to 100% took about 40 minutes. So very slow going there, that last 10%. So as I mentioned at the start, we've got a loudspeaker on the bottom. Now, unfortunately, it does not have a loudspeaker in the earpiece as well, like we get on the Mi 6 or the Mi Max 2. So as a result, it doesn't sound quite as good as my Mi Max 2, the loudspeaker, I feel, but it is not a bad loudspeaker at all. The volume it puts out, as you'll hear, and it does have a little bit of bass, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack quality is above average. It's reasonably loud and it's just more punchy than the normal because of that DAC that they've got in there. Now voice calls come out to be very good. No complaints whatsoever. I've made a couple of voice calls and the noise cancellation in noisy environments also works quite well using that secondary microphone on the top. So let's have a listen to how it sounds. So 
So there you go, not a bad loudspeaker at all that Xiaomi has used on this one. So gaming performance, as you'd expect from a Snapdragon 625, is okay because it's only a 1080p screen. I mean, the performance is good. You don't tend to see too many little stutters, but it will happen now and again. You get a few little, tiny little micro pauses and frame rate dips. But overall, all of the latest games that are demanding new titles are all playable on this mobile. So after gaming on it for 38 minutes now, look at the temperatures. It gets a little warm. 37 degrees on the front. Almost 38. And on the rear, I've noticed that it's getting quite hot around this area here. Doesn't seem to be thermal throttling though. So we're actually a little bit cooler here on the rear. There's a glass. So if you're gonna be gaming on those for extended periods, do expect it to get quite warm. So the rear camera on the rear, they've got a similar setup to the Mi 6, but it is not the same camera here. It has a different sensor. It's got an Omnivision sensor in it. Both of them are 12 megapixels with an f2.6 aperture. Now I've noticed that there's quite a few issues that have pulled through from previous mobile phones with the rear camera is that the focus will pulse in and out a lot. It struggles to get focus in video and even sometimes taking a photo, the focus will be off at first and you need to tap to manually focus to get the photo. And that's not too much of a problem, but overall I find the quality is disappointing. Now Xiaomi's saying it's just as good as the Mi 6, but it is clearly not when you have a look at my samples here. Now it can take a really good photo a very good photo and good light. So outdoors, brilliant sunshine, it will take a nice photo. And you get the two times optical zoom on this sensor right here, which is the one on the right side, very similar to the way the Mi 6 here you can see is set up. But what disappoints is often the photos are way oversaturated, especially when it comes to bright colors like flowers, it will clip and there's often problems with the color that it's not spot on, the colors are just off and very disappointing low light and indoor photos as you'll see from my samples here. So let's take a look at them. So this is a sample now from the front facing camera. There was on the first version of the ROM that I tested an issue with the noise cancellation. Thankfully that is now gone on the latest update. Now the quality of it you can see is okay. Um, it does tend to wash out a little bit with the backgrounds and struggle a little bit with the dynamic range you can see with the mount assist over here, but that's kind of normal. You can't really expect too much from this five megapixel front facing camera. I think it does a decent job, this camera, at least. Now let's have a look at the rear. So our rear camera can shoot up to 4K, but it's always 1080p that's the full default. Now like other Xiaomi phones, we cannot record in 60 frames per second 1080p, which is quite annoying. A lot of other models support that. And you'll see that the focus the whole time it is pulsing in and out. It has that focus breathing issue, which is all too common on Xiaomi phones. I mean, I have seen this on phones since the Mi Note 2, or even before that. It seems that they can never get the cameras right. The quality itself is all right, but we do not have optical image stabilization, or even digital or electronic stabilization, which would help to smooth things out if they had that enabled. So because we have the two sensors, it has portrait mode. Now what this entails is using the two times optical sensor you can see here. So it will zoom into the subject and then use the main sensor 
as the background and it will stitch them to both of them together using software. Now here are some examples. This is of my cat hair Vera and you can see that it does take quite a good looking photo with the blurred background there. But when you look at some of the images, of course on animals, it doesn't come out as good with the fur and even people with their hair, it, you can really notice around those areas that the stitching, the way it stitches it together with the software isn't quite perfect. Now, I personally would rather have an optical image stabilized sensor instead of both of these sensors here because I feel it's just a bit of a gimmick, but it seems to be something that is very popular at the moment. And that is the reason why Xiaomi have it on this mobile. So the Mi 5X is a mobile phone that is stuck between the Mi 6, which has better dual cameras on the rear, and then the Redmi Note 4X and the Redmi Note 4, which is a mobile phone that is powered by the same exact chipset, has a larger battery, and is way cheaper. We're talking about 100 US cheaper. This at the moment is retailing for 240 to 250 US, which is far too expensive. And then the likes of the Redmi Note 4 and the Redmi Note 4 X, they are selling for about 140. So really it comes down to the fact that do you want this dual camera setup? Do you actually need to take those portrait photos? then maybe, maybe then it's a good phone to go for. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad mobile phone. I really do like that 3.5 millimeter audio quality we have out of there is excellent, but it just disappoints with the battery life. It's only getting around eight to nine hours of on-screen time. I can get 14 from the Redmi Note 4X, and then those cameras aren't really good at all in low light, and the focusing problems persist in yet another Xiaomi phone, which is a real disappointment. So the build quality overall is good, it's nice and thin, and it's following on from the same kind of design we have that really started with the Mi 5C that I reviewed, and then the Mi Max 2, and now this, which isn't a bad thing, but I'm not really fond of this trend to move towards these dual cameras. I would rather have a better rear sensor with larger pixels and optical image stabilization, I feel, would produce better low light photos, better video quality, and overall probably better daylight photos too. So at the end of the day, it comes really hard to recommend this one. I feel you're better off spending your money and getting the Redmi Note 4X if you want the battery life and the same performance, or if you must have dual cameras, then go for the Mi 6, which takes a lot better image and I feel that those sensors just perform a lot better in low light as well. Thank you so much for watching this review, and I do hope to catch you back with future up-and-coming releases of the Xiaomi series of phones. We're probably going to see another two or three before the end of the year, and I do hope to see you back then with those reviews. Bye for now.